Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 16. Been an interesting great chapter closed in this book. And it came to pass, and it shall come to pass, that everyone that is left of all the nations, plural, which came against Jerusalem. Now, I don't know what that means, because all the nations have been against Jerusalem as an enemy, cursing Jerusalem. They've been trampled by Jesus. The only ones that get into the millennium are the sheep nation. Now against can be, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the Republicans versus the Democrats. But against can be also up against. You know, like today, my cat. I'm in the kitchen. My cat loves me. So he's rubbing against my leg like, shall even go up from year to year to worship the capital K King. We talked about that last night. That's Jesus. Revelation 19. That King shows up 74 times in 70 verses. Now wait, now wait a minute. Some of those verses are a reference to Melchizedek. The king of Salem, the king of peace, the king of rights, I believe it, found in Genesis and Hebrew. So, not all 74 verses are directly to Jesus. But King Melchizedek is a great type of Jesus. Except for a few things, you would actually would you would say that is Jesus. Except this, there is no other king, capital K, in the Bible. And there's also another thing that this could be: if you have a king that began a sentence, you know how you begin a sentence with a capital letter. It could be that one too. I didn't check these all out. So if you have a, a, a sentence in a period and King Saul or King David, that king would be capitalized and that would have been in my search that I did. So I'm telling you, with this search of, of 74 verses, I'm telling you what could be the errors that I did not search or take into hand. But it's Jesus Christ. And with over 70 verses, and if I were to, to, to go in there and take out the verses, you know, the beginning of a sentence, and Melchizedek, which I'd probably go into Melchizedek, I would have a study that would be three or four different messages. One of the places you find is the King of Glory. And uh, the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's on the seventh month. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to get into a long study. But if you want the probable time of the birth of Jesus, it's not Tammuz Mass. It would be a Jewish feast of the Jewish people. the Feast of Tabernacles. When the Jews would take trees and branches and build temporary housing as God would come into a temporary body of human where he's God and he's human. He's human that he died on the cross. He's God that he came out of an empty tomb. The Feast of Tabernacles is the only feast that has eight days. When they brought Jesus to be circumcised the eighth day, 
I think it was Simeon. And Anna shows up. If this is the Feast of Tabernacles, this would be the end last day of the Feast of Tabernacles when they went into the temple and proclaimed his name to be Jesus and circumcised Jesus. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem. Think about it. If it is the birthday of Jesus, if it is, it could be wrong. We are reading Zechariah 14 that God mandates for you to show up. By law, you are in the law in the millennium. If it is the birthday of Jesus, you must come to his celebration. Or we'll see the consequences. There are three times a year that the Jews were to go, the males were to go to Jerusalem. Passover, Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Passover is when they slain the land. And they were redeemed and they came out of Egypt. The day of atonement that twice, one day, that the high priest would go into the most holy of holy to, to put the blood upon the, uh, the mercy seat. And the only one of those three days that don't have a blood pass over Day of Atonement is the, the Feast of Tabernacles. It shall be that who will not come up of all the families of the earth, that's Jew or Gentile, all the families. You don't come up as a nation, you don't come up as a tribe, you come up as a family. That was different from the law. The law said the males. God said, "If you those three times a year, I will protect your family. I will protect your homes while you're there. You could leave your wife and your daughters behind, and God would protect them. God says in the millennium, you bring your whole family. Not just the males. Of the earth. All around the whole globe to worship the King, capital K, the Lord of hosts. Even upon them shall be no rain. You don't come, you don't get no rain in the millennium. So, in the millennium, you say, Is there sin? Here's the sin of rebellion. And as a consequence, you don't get no rain. And if the family of Egypt, uh-oh, Egypt. Well, as we go through the study, as we got ourselves to Zechariah, we saw some of the prophets tell us that Egypt is going to get right with God. Egypt will be called a family of people of God. There will be a highway from Egypt to Jerusalem. But, if, I mean, out of that, if there are any family in Egypt, Egyptians, or Jews, that go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the blood. That's a plague. In the millennium. Wherewith the Lord shall smite the heathen Gentiles. That come not up to the feast of tabernacles. That's the Jewish thing. We don't have to. Yes you do. So in the millennium. Right, in the church age. We say that's the law. We're not under the law. And the church has a big problem with the with the with the with the gospels. As we are coming up around the corner, the gospels are coming up. 
A lot of things in the gospel that, that you read, that ain't us. A lot of things in the law, that ain't us. For salvation. Now there are things in the law, you know, it'd be perfectly wise and great to adhere because this is how God feels. I print no marks upon your body. All right. Technically, a Christian can get tattoos. But when you go to the law, God says no. We're not under the law. But Paul tells us nine of the Ten Commandments, leaving out the Sabbath. We are definitely told by Acts in the early church, no eating of drinking of blood. No idolatry. No fornication. No idolatry. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't have lust. And there are some th like, uh, the battlement upon the roof. We can do or die with that. And if you want to protect people, you know, going up your roof, put a you can put a battlement. That's not going to save your soul. Now, when you come into the tribulation period where they are under the law, the devil's going to have them believe, well, you know, we're under grace. We're not under the law. No, you got it backwards, Mr. Devil. And, and the devil always gets things messed up. And there will be a group of people, I guarantee, in the tribulation period running around, grace, grace, all grace, God's grace. No, you're under the law because there's the temple. And then we get to the millennium, we got the law. And you got Gentiles. And just, well, you know, that's just a Jewish thing. <laughs> no, it's not. Egypt. You see, the devil's locked up for a thousand. Absolutely correctly right. And if you don't go to the, to the Feast of Tabernacles, all right, you get a plague of no rain. Is that Satan? I don't think so. He's locked up. It could be maybe the devils. Or it could be the human nature saying, you know what? I don't want to do what God tells me to do. You can't say every single Sunday morning. You cannot say, oh, I want to go to church. Happy I'm going to church. Yay, glory to God. No, you don't feel like that 52 times out of the year. There's some Sundays like, Maybe it's just me. Oh man. I'm going to sleep in. I don't want, I don't feel good. You can't say that's the devil. That's your flesh. And I don't know who interrogates the, the person here in the millennium if the devil's bound for a thousand years. Uh, you could realize your flesh, like, I don't want to go to Jerusalem. Well, that's too far. Really? If the family in Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherein the Lord shall smite the heathen that come not up to the, keep the feast of tabernacles. If that is the birthday of Jesus, if you don't come to the birthday of Jesus, the celebration of Jesus, the law of the Feast of Tabernacles, you're going to get a plague of no rain. This shall be the punishment of Egypt. Was drinking that... <laughs> There are going to be people in Egypt going to say, uh, no. As the punishment of all nations, plural, that come not up to keep the feast, there will be Gentile nations in the thousand years of the world. I don't want to go.
and they're going to get no rain. What do you think that the other Egyptians, that the other nations are going to be with the families that don't want? Man, they're going to be like, you better get your butt over there. I ain't not going to suffer no rain here because you don't want to go. Or maybe it'd be like it was an exit. It's going to rain here, it's going to rain there. Jesus said God makes it to rain on the just and unjust. Maybe this is the point he'll make it rain not on those only that don't go. I don't know. In that day shall there be bells upon the horse. Now there's only one other place there's bells in the Bible. And that was on the hem of the high priest's robe that you would hear him. They didn't have a rope tied to him. That you would hear him go into the most holy place. <clears throat> Forgive my throat. And if you didn't hear him ringing, he was dead. You didn't put a rope on it. Oh, there's no rope in the garments of the high priest. If you attached a rope to him, there would be no bells ringing. He'd be dead. Nabab and Bayou brought in whatever they brought into the holy place and struck a match or whatever they struck. God said, you're dead. You're not tying a rope to him. He would go in and, and the priests around would have their ear on the outside of the tabernacle because they couldn't go to the holy place. They would be like, is he ringing? Yeah, he's still ringing. What about, yeah, he's still ringing. All right, it's getting louder. Here he comes. That's the only two places you find bells. Shall be bells upon the whole on the horses, holy this unto the Lord. That's written on the horses. As upon the thighs of the horsemen of Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the pots in the Lord's house, the temple. The pots. It's a pot. You don't need to run to the Hebrew and Greek. It's a pot. You know what a pot is. There were pots and pans and dishes and spoons and forks and, and all kinds of utensils in the temple and the service. They had meat folks. And, uh, Eli, uh, Eli's sons had that pitchfork thing. shall be like the bowls before the altar. What's that? The brazen altar had bowls to collect the blood. There's a place that we're going to see, I believe it's Malachi, is they're holy. And if you were to touch one of those bowls that's hanging on the altar or by the altar, you were... It was No, no, you don't touch that. That's holy. But the pots and bowls, whatever their function, whatever their things are, they are holy. They are special. You, you didn't put your salad and your, your your banana pudding and your beef casserole in that for the fellowship. Did you didn't do that? You didn't wash them in the sink or. And just throw them underneath, you know, in the cabinet. No, no. You wash them right away and you put them in a particular spot, in a particular way, proper. You made sure you didn't lose anything. Yay. Every pot in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem and Judah, not just the, the temple of the Lord. Now we're in the city. Now we're in the county of Judah. Shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. That's 
factory market. Are they one get? It just says every pot in Jerusalem, the city, in Judah, the county, shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. Every pot that's in your house is holy to God. Along with the pots and the pans and the bowls that are in the temple. All they that sacrifice shall come and take of them. Pots. And seed, that's a, that's a, that's a boil, a cook. Therein, and in that day, in that day again, there shall be no more Canaanite in the house, the temple, the Lord of hosts. And there are people that, that think that in the church. Weird, you know, that church house is sacred and all that. Very be careful what you say. A lot of things about that temple, about the house of the Lord, that will not fit your church. Now, that Canaanite, that's quite interesting. That is the descendants of Ham that came out of Noah's ark. There's one particular family of Ham, Kayana. You see, Ham was supposed to go south. Japheth was supposed to just spread out. Shem was to go east. God divided. And the Hamites, the Ham, the children of Ham, there's Genesis 10. Were to go all the way down south and Africa was their land. Problem is, is the Canaanites stopped in a land that's called Israel today and they settled in. The Hittites, the Hivites, the, the, the Parasites, and I forget the rest of them. Those were all the descendants of Ham and their wickedness and their sins that God says, drive them out. And we are in the millennium, and God says, not even the Canaanite. Now, don't go and say there's no colored people in the millennium. What do you do with the Egyptian? The Egyptian's colored. But there's one family of, of Ham, the Canaanite, God says, no. In the temple. Now that's remarkable when you go to Matthew. And you do have a problem with the KKK. Because Canaanites were colored people. And the KKK is against the colored people and they're against the Jews. So right there, they're done. Jehovah Witnesses, if they look at their history and they were to read their watchtower, the next thing to scum, their watchtower, was the black man. And either the Jehovah Witnesses or the Mormons would say the next thing to the devil was the colored man. The colored man was the devil. Check your history. And it's quite interesting to find Matthew chapter 10 Verse 1, the 12 disciples, there they are. Look at verse 4. One, number 11 of the 12 is Simon the Canaanite. Now, I don't go with his artwork because it, it's completely just, it's not right. Jesus and the 12 disciples didn't sit there while they painted the picture of them. It's the wrong table, and it's the wrong seating of the Last Supper. But let me ask you a question. I don't care about it. I'll let you do it. 
you can remark in the comments. Is there a colored man at the at the Last Supper? Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You forgot Jesus, 13. Are there 13 at that table? Some would say, hey, there's no 13. Some Because they took Judas out. Because Judas couldn't partake of the Lord's Supper, the Mass. Yes, he did. Well, let me ask you a question. Look at that Lord's Supper. Go Google Lord's Supper. And focus up on those men. Go to Genesis chapter 10. Not you won't go to Genesis chapter 10. We'll go there. But you know what? Your average Christian is lazy. And Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. Is there a color? And there may be if there is. Okay. But Genesis 10, 6, the sons of Ham. Look at the last son of, of Ham, Canaan. There we go. Now, how Cain, how Ham or his children got the black mark, I don't know. But they are the black man. Seth is the tan brown man. Japheth is the white man. How? Why? Where? I don't know. But there's the Canaan. That's exactly what we're talking about right now. And I go a bit, a little bit further. By the way, verse 14, you see Kassadon, out of who came Philistine, that's the Philistines. Philistines were colored people of Ham. All right, verse 15. And Cana, there it is, beget Sidon, you find that city, the city of Zidon, Heth, you'll find that name, Jebusite, there's Jerusalem. Amorite, you'll find him in the, in the family mentioned. The Gergesite, get rid of them. He says, go in there, get rid of the Gergesite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite. And the Amorite, the Zamorite, the Hamite, and afterwards were the families of the Canaanites spread aboard. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon. You'll find that in the Bible. As it comes to Gerar, that's where Abraham and Isaac would go. She's my sister. On to Gaza, Philistines, colored. As it goes to Sodom and Gomorrah and Adua, Zublin, even Lach. They were colored people. These are the sons of Ham. From verse 15. To the end of verse 18, God says, no more of those people are going to be in my temple, my house. Now, go back to verse 4. Read the names of the children that are not, verse 6, excuse me, of the Canaanites. There's Nineveh. There's Asher. Those will be. It's the family of the Canaanite. But again, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus, he hardly even mentioned, was a Canaanite. Peter did not like Gentiles. <laughs> Can you imagine what, I mean, you know what John says? This is extra and we'll close. You know what John said? John said, you know what? We can't write everything, what happened to Jesus. Can you imagine all the fights that Peter got with with the Gentile disciples? I want you to go to, to uh, um, Cornelius. Oh, no, Lord, not me. I'm not nothing unclean. <laughs> I hope the tax collector. I bet you they had fun with him. 
Come on, who likes your friendly tax collector? Four fishermen. Peter, James, John, and I work with lobstermen. Now, you want to meet a broadly group of men that argue and fight. They're fishermen. You know, Jesus had a motley crew with him. He say, well, how come, I mean, do you really believe that no one knew what Judas was going to do? Peter cut the ear off of a man that was going to arrest Jesus. What do you think Peter would have knew, would have done, if he knew Judas was at that table he was going to betray Jesus? I guarantee where the scriptures are silent and all that. I guarantee there are times that Jesus was like, all right, guys, stop. Knock it off. Will you? Imagine, imagine Jesus off in prayer with God. Do you believe these men? Oh, man. Listen, man. They didn't get refined to after the resurrection of Jesus. That was his extra.